Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, dear colleagues. And but would we have my slide, please? Yes, great. And today, uh, I would like uh, to share with you some of our experience in application of formal methods to software verification. And uh, <coughs> where are many domains uh, where uh, software plays very important roles from security perspective, from safety perspective. And uh, we definitely would like to have uh, no bugs in such software. And sometime uh, uh, we see an opinion uh, that formal methods is a magical mathematical tool that can help us to achieve uh, such situation, to achieve uh, software, uh, software that have no any bugs. If we look at this uh, more in more details, uh, such magical tool have to guarantee that in all possible configurations, in all possible input data, with all possible interactions of our software with its environment, and uh, with all possible uh, timings, preemptions, and other internal events, uh, the software behaves correctly. But uh, what does it mean from a mathematical point of view, and how is it possible to apply mathematical methods to try to achieve to this goal? First of all, uh, to apply mathematical methods to software, we have to represent this software as a mathematical object. That means that we have, we have to build a model of this software. As the second item, we have to uh, represent a concept of software behaves correctly as a mathematical object. That means that we have to build a model of requirements to this software. And at the next step, we have to define what does it mean that two mathemat mathematical objects representing software uh, satisfies two requirements represented by responding mathematical object. And <coughs> when we uh, build such uh, mathematical objects, and we have a definition of uh, uh, relationship between these classes of mathematical objects, and we be can build uh, instances of these particular objects, we have to pro prove that for these particular instances, uh, we have a particular relation. That means that our model of our software uh, satisfies to our model of requirements. Of course, it uh, looks uh, uh, maybe quite a simple task, but we have uh, some problems here. And maybe the first problem is how to build a model of software. Maybe the second problem, how to build uh, a model of requirements. The third problem, how to define a uh, satisfied relationship. And uh, the fourth problem is uh, how to prove that we have such a relation. Of course, it's maybe uh, uh, problems that uh, we have many uh, approaches to uh, solve, but well, there are two uh, basic challenges that we have to uh, consider when we try to apply these techniques. The first challenge is uh, uh, transition from uh, or building uh, models from uh, informal understanding of our requirements. It is uh, a very unclear object in reality, and it's a really complex task to build formal representation of these requirements. Uh, moreover, as uh, Mikhail Roman and Shurubura uh, said, transition from uh, informal to the formal is essential informal. So this uh, 
transition ca cannot be uh, done in any formal way. <laughs> and that is a, a, a problem, uh, especially when we have uh, no clear understanding what is our requirements to our software. Of course, in the areas which I mentioned before, in areas we have where we apply uh, or develop software to safety critical areas, uh, usually we have quite good uh, software development processes where uh, requirements to this software is developed uh, in quite good way. And as an example, uh, I present here some statistics from our uh, projects uh, where we develop a real-time operating system for a civil avionics domain. Uh, that means that this operating system have to satisfy to requirements of uh, DO178C. And um, uh, according to these uh, requirements, we develop high-level requirements to the operating system as a whole. Uh, we uh, decompose our operating system to small components. And uh, for each of these components, we develop uh, low level requirements. And here you can see uh, some statistics that it, even high level requirements uh, of, uh, for our operating system is more than 1000 pages. And uh, it uh, consists of more than 1,300 uh, elementary requirements and other and, and many other objects uh, that define uh, concept and terms that is used in these uh, uh, re requirements. And for low-level requirements, uh, uh, numbers is uh, doubled. But I have to mention here that we are in the process of the development of uh, low-level requirements and expect that uh, it should be at least twice of a current status. So that uh, transition uh, is uh, challenging for uh, even relatively small operating system where we have uh, only functions that really required to uh, achieve uh, need the needs of our uh, systems. And if we take a look on software that is developed for general purpose and have to solve a lot of problems from uh, different domains like Linux kernel, uh, we can see that numbers of uh, uh, are at least 1,000 uh, times more. At least you can see that uh, our operating system is uh, 20 uh, kilolines and the uh, Linux kernel is uh, 21 million lines. And uh, the same we can see for our uh, industrial projects as well. Uh, what mitigations can be uh, applied to try to solve this uh, challenge. Uh, one possible approach that is often used is to formalize only simple properties uh, that can be easily uh, checked by experts. Uh, and uh, in that case, uh, it uh, uh, can help to make sure that a formal model of our requirements uh, doesn't contain bugs itself because when we have so uh, complex systems with so uh, complex requirements and try to formalize these requirements, we uh, have to be sure that uh, this formal model will have bugs as well. Uh, another possible approach uh, when apply formal method techniques is to avoid requirements at all 
because this problem is of building this requirements is too complex. And the check only uh, absence of some typical bugs in the code uh, that uh, <laughs> we have in for our system, like uh, checking uh, safety properties uh, working with memory, uh, checking assertions and things like that. And uh, if we work with complete specification of our model, of course, we can try to apply uh, formal methods to check some internal consistency of our models uh, to, of requirements uh, and uh, uh, try to review this model by experts. And of course, when we check our model of requirements against implementation, we also can find a lot of bugs in uh, a model of requirements. So, our, our second challenge uh, that we have is complexity of uh, system under analysis. And if we look just on uh, one uh, system on call graph on one system call from Linux kernel, uh, it's uh, it's an unrealistically to understand all these dependencies uh, in without significant efforts. And uh, even uh, if we take a look at requirements to our small real-time operating system, uh, we could see that many of them uh, refer to some algorithms uh, or that have quite complex uh, structure. And uh, even if, if this requirement is an elementary one, that is say that in particular situation, uh, operating system have to do something, it's usually referred to some of uh, algorithms describing the, that it means. And as you can see, uh, in many cases, that algorithms are complex as well. The main mitigation that we have to cope with uh, this problem of complexity uh, is abstraction. Of course, that means that we try to uh, simplify uh, the system to try to ignore irrelevant details and uh, uh, try to focus on really important and central properties of <coughs> our system. And now let me uh, look at uh, some patterns that we see in our practice, how these uh, challenges are uh, considered in uh, projects where formal methods are applied to uh, some practical tasks. The first pattern which I would like to mention is uh, uh, an approach with, uh, where both models, software model and requirements model is built by experts. Uh, and after that, some of approaches uh, like deductive verification or model checking are applied to uh, prove that uh, model builds by expert uh, are in satisfied to relationship. Uh, <coughs> of course, uh, uh, for uh, proving uh, that they have such relationship, various uh, technique can be applied. Model checking or deductive verification. Uh, model checking can uh, be applied fully automatically and uh, uh, that makes this approach very uh, <coughs> attractive. But of course, uh, in this case, we have a problem in that any incremental change in uh, uh, software or maybe in requirement model uh, can uh, lead to situation where the tool uh, cannot uh, handle such 
complex uh, model and uh, we have no fallback how to uh, help a uh, tool to uh, solve uh, this task uh, with this technique. For deductive verification techniques uh, where a manual decomposition usually used in terms of definition of, of um, uh, invariance or some other approaches, uh, in that case, of, uh, of course, uh, a lot of automation is used to discharge uh, verification conditions that usually generated uh, these techniques and uh, in these cases uh, we typically have a fallback uh, approach when automatic tools uh, like SMT solvers cannot prove some theorems automatically in that case they can try to do it in interactive theorem proofs, um, provers but of course it's <coughs> not very pleasant task to do and uh, looking at this, we can see here that uh, we could uh, have a good confidence with these approaches. Uh, of course, keeping in mind that in both models, model of software and model of requirements is built uh, manually. Uh, but because of this uh, step, uh, this model can be quite simple and they can represent really important details, they have good abstraction, but uh, otherwise, if we assume that experts uh, done their work uh, correctly, they get a good confidence that uh, analyzed properties are <coughs> proved in, on top of these models and uh, uh, up to this manual step, uh, they are represented in the system under analysis. If we look at the second pattern that we uh, see in uh, practice is uh, approach uh, that we do, uh, usually call a software deductive verification. In this case, uh, a model of uh, software and analysis is built automatically from source code of a binary code of our software. And for this automatically built model, we try to uh, prove that it satisfy manual written requirements in uh, uh, some form. Uh, in this case, uh, we usually look at software uh, as a white box. We see uh, particular functions and uh, define uh, for each function uh, co where contracts uh, usually with help of precondition or postcondition. Uh, and uh, uh, define loop invariance uh, as a step uh, helping our tools to prove that uh, source code that we have as implementation uh, on all possible paths satisfy to uh, this model of our requirements representing in terms of precondition and postcondition. And that means that uh, we try to prove that if function is called with parameters and uh, in the state of the system that satisfy preconditions uh, on all possible paths when function uh, finishes its work, uh, we will have a, a system of our state and uh, output parameters that satisfy to our post condition. Here uh, we uh, also have uh, a lot of automation that can help us to discharge um, generated verification conditions for our uh, functions. And uh, uh, here uh, we also have the same problem as deductive verification on top of models that uh, uh, if uh, SMT solvers can or some other tools that we apply to automatically prove that uh, verification conditions, uh, we have a potential fallback to prove 
uh, verification conditions that are too complex for the tools uh, manually using interactive theorem proven, uh, provers, but um, in, in practice, it's uh, uh, even more complex task because uh, mo model of software automatically generated by other tools requires uh, quite deep understanding by experts that try to prove its properties and that's not a simple task. But nevertheless, uh, this approach uh, can provide very good confidence of, in the result that we prove that our uh, software is satisfied to, our, to the model of requirements that we define in terms of preconditions, postconditions. Of course, this confidence is up to some assumptions uh, that we have. Uh, for example, uh, we assume that uh, a compiler that built uh, a machine code from source code we have analyzed uh, behaves correctly. And in particular, uh, it satisfies to a model of uh, computation that we use in our verification tool. And now of assumption that we often have when apply these approaches is an assumption that, uh, for example, have limited parallelism or even proof behavior of uh, correctness of behavior of our functions uh, and the assumption that it's a sequential execution. And of course, uh, this approach have a significant drawback uh, because it requires a lot of manual efforts of very uh, well-educated experts. And uh, as a result, uh, this have a very uh, significant cost. And theoretically, uh, the scope of application of these uh, techniques uh, is quite big. Uh, we can take quite a big s software decomp and uh, pr define contracts for each uh, function in this software and try to uh, prove uh, uh, that source code satisfies to these uh, requirements. And uh, in particular, we uh, prove uh, when we prove uh, requirements for one particular function, we have to use requirements that we uh, apply to a function that we call from uh, the current one. But uh, realistically, the scope of application is limited by the very big cost of this process. Now, uh, let me take a look at the third pattern. And that pattern is uh, uh, software model checking. An approach when we apply, we also build a uh, model of software automatically, but when we apply model checking techniques to prove that this model uh, satisfy to requirements. As far as the model checking tools have to uh, <coughs> uh, analyze uh, this property fully automatically, uh, it's often, uh, and uh, as we uh, discussed before, it have to apply uh, some kind of abstraction automatically uh, during this process. Uh, in this case, it's usually uh, can be applied only to simplify it properties uh, no, and cannot be used to uh, prove uh, that a model of our software satisfy to uh, full functional requirements. And uh, the problems that uh, they have here that uh, this approach is uh, limited by complexity of code and requirements. Uh, yeah. But at the same time, uh, it uh, works 
mostly automatically, so it requires much less manual efforts. And as soon as it uh, consider our software under uh, on detail level, it provides us a good confidence in the results. But of course, there are uh, assumptions uh, that still uh, should be applied because verification tool for also usually consider uh, software uh, working is out or with some limited parallelism and, and with some other uh, simplifications. And uh, finally, uh, let's consider the fourth pattern that we have. And uh, in this pattern, uh, we switch uh, from analysis of a full model of software uh, using formal methods. Uh, in this case, we uh, uh, execute our software on some particular test cases and uh, collect execution trace for uh, such uh, uh, test, tests. And when we build a mathematical ob object representing this execution trace and analyze only this uh, object of representing uh, this trace uh, against a requirements model. As uh, we can see, uh, of course, uh, uh, such uh, mo models are m much more simple because we describe just one particular trace of execution, not uh, all possible traces. And uh, it can be solved much more efficiently with uh, uh, the tools that we have. <coughs> so uh, in most cases, this uh, uh, checks is uh, executed fully automatically. So no any manual uh, invention required. That means that we can uh, generate a lot of test cases and uh, uh, check and then uh, check that uh, in these uh, test cases, uh, we, we behavior of system under analysis that we observed satisfied to the model of requirements that we have. <laughs> and of course, uh, when we uh, generate, we have to build these uh, test cases, we can uh, prepare this uh, well uh, manually, or we can try to uh, apply various techniques to generate uh, these test cases from some models and in particular from the same requirements model that we use to uh, check uh, correctness of the behavior of a system at a test. And this approach, of course, uh, have uh, uh, much less confidence in the result because we definitely analyze our software only on uh, particular execution paths, not on all possible paths. But at the same time, it requires much less efforts and uh, it can be uh, applied even uh, for very complex uh, systems uh, that where uh, application of uh, uh, models representing the whole system is uh, <coughs> completely unrealistic. And now, uh, let's take uh, a look on this uh, 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 patterns uh, from uh, a perspective of uh, results that it provides. So deductive verification and model checking uh, can be applied uh, with uh, manual uh, building of uh, uh, models or so if automatic uh, building of models in both cases uh, provide quite good confidence uh, but uh, deductive verification in both cases have uh, 
uh, big requirements to manual efforts uh, um, to be used, but uh, at the same time it can be applied to uh, cover uh, to prove properties of uh, quite big systems, and it's usually uh, limited by cost of uh, application, not by uh, uh, tool uh, limitations. Model checking uh, also have good code of confidence, and but it uh, can be applied much more automatically, so it have uh, less requirements to experts in terms of applications, of course, then uh, that doesn't mean then uh, that a problem of uh, building a model of requirements is uh, solved automatically. But the main problem of model checking techniques is uh, uh, a limited uh, uh, complexity of uh, <coughs> code that it can be handled uh, uh, automatically and the absence of fallback when the tool uh, cannot solve a problem uh, after some incremental improvements or adding some uh, small uh, additional elements to system under analysis. And finally, uh, runtime verification techniques where we switch from analysis of uh, uh, all possible paths to analysis of uh, system under test on particular uh, test cases. It has uh, much less confidence, but it has require much less efforts and uh, have almost unlimited complexity uh, of system under test. And uh, if we uh, look uh, about uh, some real examples of applications of these techniques, uh, and these patterns uh, in our practice, uh, uh, I try to summarize some of uh, projects uh, where we uh, see these patterns and uh, actually try to apply all these approaches uh, to uh, operating systems and uh, most of, first of all, to Linux kernel as a, a industrial software that a good target for application of formal methods and these techniques. And all these activities we do uh, in, within the Linux Verification Center, uh, founded uh, more than 15 years ago in our institute. And we have a number of uh, uh, projects where we try to apply advanced uh, Notification techniques and formal methods to uh, Linux software. And first uh, <coughs> project that we start uh, in 2009 was a uh, model based testing that uh, follows uh, to uh, <coughs> pattern number four that is. Considered before. In this uh, project, uh, our target was uh, uh, Linux uh, uh, binary interface described in Linux standard based specification, uh, and uh, where we uh, analyze all uh, with. Uh, uh, requirements. Uh, in particular, we built a catalog of all requirements applicable to uh, Linux kernel, uh, Linux standard base core uh, that uh, specify requirements to 1050 uh, interfaces. And most of these interfaces are uh, referred to POSIX specifications. And catalog of uh, requirements extracted uh, from for this interfaces consist uh, more than uh, 20,000 uh, of elementary requirements. And uh, during this uh, building of requirements uh, and 
uh, a second step uh, building a formal model of this uh, requirements uh, we uh, of course find a, a number of deficiencies in the specifications almost 100 of them were reported and fixed in lsbn POSIX, and uh, uh, more than uh, 80 bucks were reported in distributions uh, and uh, uh, fix it during this project. Uh, if you look at the uh, architecture of this approach, uh, in this case, we have specification that described requirements to uh, uh, interfaces uh, uh, that were represented as C functions, and they use our specification extension of C programming language uh, to describe requirements uh, in a formal model. And this specification, though, uh, used as a source for to generate uh, C code uh, that uh, represent uh, that solve a problem of uh, uh, checking uh, traces against of uh, uh, a model of requirements. And uh, also, on top of this model, we also built uh, test scenarios and uh, some uh, that. Uh, help us to automatically uh, build a sequence of test uh, steps uh, in <coughs> where each particular test step were described manually uh, by test designer. And uh, uh, if we look at this experience, uh, basically they can say that um, model-based uh, testing approach allows us to achieve uh, better quality of uh, test suite that we built against the uh, approach when we try to uh, build such uh, test suite by manual definition of uh, test cases with some uh, classical techniques and uh, <coughs> Uh, also, uh, it's uh, easy to maintain such uh, uh, test suite because uh, we have less duplication. But of course, uh, that works only if we have very smart uh, test engineers that uh, have very good mathematical background. Uh, and uh, it's not realistically to expect to work uh, well in classical uh, uh, situations where test engineers are not uh, uh, programmers in sophisticated uh, sophisticated knowledge and especially not uh, experts in mathematical uh, techniques. <laughs> As a, an, another example, uh, let me uh, point to our Linux driver verification program uh, where we apply the third pattern, a pattern where the software, software model checking tools are used. Uh, we uh, and uh, as far as software model checking techniques is used when we build a model of a system of our software automatically, but uh, uh, we try to prove absence of uh, typical bugs in the, uh, the software under analysis. And uh, in, in that case, uh, when we start this project, we decide to analyze what kind of typical bugs in Linux kernel uh, we have, and we analyze uh, all commits for one year in stable uh, branch of Linux kernel and build a taxonomy of typical bugs. Uh, and we can see here that uh, most of them can be represented as uh, reachability problems. Uh, some of them also can be represented as reachability, but uh, very closely related to memory model of uh, C programs, uh, and, where, and, and where we apply some uh, modification of uh, cl uh, classical 
ability model checkers based on uh, symbolic memory graphs. And for uh, the last categories of synchronization problems, and especially for data races, we will need to develop some special tools also based on uh, the same ideas. As far as I have no time today to go into details, I'll just briefly mention that as a, a main engine for software model checking, we use CPA checker tool that is developed uh, uh, originally uh, by a uh, team of Dirk Beer from uh, University of Passau and now University of um, uh, Munich. And uh, we participate and contribute to this tool as well. And in particular, we develop SMG uh, techniques uh, there and uh, more complex memory model for that that <coughs> can represent uh, complexity of Linux kernel code. Uh, also, data race tool was developed by our uh, team. And uh, uh, in addition, to be able to apply software model checking, uh, engine that is a uh, CPA checker, uh, we have to build uh, a lot of tooling that uh, help us to extract some uh, modules of Linux kernel, loadable modules, build model of environment for that modules and uh, uh, only for such uh, relatively small pieces uh, that up to 10,000 kilo lines, uh, try to apply software ML checking to find uh, bugs, uh, typical bugs in the uh, Linux drivers. <coughs> and uh, oh, so I, I mentioned uh, we partition uh, hook, uh, the rebig Linux kernel to elements uh, by border of uh, uh, a natural concept for Linux kernel that is uh, loadable kernel modules. Uh, and uh, we have to uh, in de <coughs> uh, define environment model for such uh, uh, pieces of C code because we have no main function as a software model checking tool usually expect. We have quite sophisticated uh, approach with registration of callbacks that when you code from Linux kernel uh, after this registration. So we have to emulate <coughs> environment uh, of uh, device driver uh, that simulate uh, how Linux kernel work with these device drivers. Uh, but in our case, it's uh, a model of these environments that is suitable for uh, verification tool and uh, uh, at the same time uh, it have to represent uh, only a real uh, interaction of uh, code under analysis with uh, uh, the kernel core so we have to keep in mind some order limitation uh, of function call some implicit limitations <coughs> on uh, output uh, parameters that we have uh, so it, it requires some uh, also quite uh, uh, manual efforts to describe uh, such uh, active driver environment models that have to be uh, complete, but at the same time correct. And also they have to be simple enough uh, to, uh, so our, uh, current uh, software model checking tools can handle uh, the, co the code uh, that we will have. Because if we build too complex, uh, too precise environment model, uh, we could have uh, big problems with uh, <coughs> application of the tools. We will just have too many uh, timeouts. And this uh, project works uh, for well, maybe eight years and uh, for during these years we found many real bugs and more than 200 uh, sorry 400 of bugs were already fixed in linux kernel during this project and uh, so it uh, works as uh, a bug 
uh, finding tool quite well, but uh, of course uh, it's uh, not so not not yet so good in proven absence of a bugs uh, of even of bugs of particular kind of this uh, in this code. And as far as I have to small time, uh, I just briefly mentioned that we also have a deductive verification of operating systems uh, program where we apply a first and uh, second pattern when we uh, <coughs> try uh, to prove with uh, deductive uh, verification uh, approaches uh, some properties of manually uh, built uh, model of uh, uh, access control system uh, that we have in uh, <coughs> Linux kernel of our uh, partners uh, and uh, we use event B uh, uh, language to represent this model and use the Rodian framework to prove properties. I have here some statistics for event B code and event B models for two of our uh, models for access control that we have here. Uh, and also for Aster Linux, we also try to prove uh, uh, correctness of a uh, uh, code that implements uh, LSM uh, using our uh, deductive verification uh, techniques. And also, uh, of course, these results are proprietary because the code that we have analyzed is proprietary our partners, but uh, at the bottom of our slide, uh, we have here a link to uh, our uh, project where we apply the same tools and the same techniques to some uh, simple library functions from Linux kernel. And uh, these results are uh, open source and publicly available. A problem that I have here uh, that uh, kernel code is very low level uh, and have complexity that uh, existing uh, deductive verification tool for C programming language uh, were not able to handle, uh, like container of arithmetic and reinterpretation cast and things like that. So we have to uh, build a fork of uh, uh, from a C Y3 uh, and JC uh, plugin uh, framework that we call uh, Astraver framework. And uh, all these uh, tools are publicly available as open source <coughs> from uh, our sites. Uh, I think I will not uh, go into details of uh, some industry applications uh, that I mentioned here. <coughs> and uh, try to conclude. Uh, so if we look at the uh, basic idea that uh, formal methods is a magical mathematical tool that help us to avoid any bugs in our software, of course, it's not uh, the case that we have. <coughs> uh, we have a number of challenges, but uh, anyway, uh, we have to, when we try to apply uh, these techniques, we have to uh, take some decision against trade-off between confidence that we would like to achieve and between uh, <coughs> size of uh, court and the complexity of the problems that we have uh, and that feasible for particular techniques that we can apply in between the cost of, of uh, application of these techniques. But nevertheless, uh, <coughs> we can see that formal methods can be successfully applied in various levels and uh, of uh, <coughs> confidence that we uh, can achieve and uh, uh, efforts so that we can uh, put on this uh, increase of confidence. Uh, we cannot guarantee absence of all possible bugs, of course, using these techniques, but we can uh, try to guarantee absence of uh, 
particular kind of bugs, of course, under some assumptions. <coughs> and finally, uh, anyway, uh, we can see that formal methods provides a very valuable approach to increase our confidence in system reliability. Uh, that's very important for safety critical, security critical systems. And of course, it cannot uh, achieve a full uh, idea of uh, absence of bugs at all. Uh, and uh, also, uh, it when we try to prove absence of typical bugs and some safety properties, we can do it with uh, <coughs> reasonable efforts because we don't need to uh, develop manually specifications. Uh, and of course, uh, this approach is uh, limited in confidence uh, and the limited in size, of course, uh, where it can be applied, but at least uh, it uh, <coughs> can be uh, applied with uh, feasible efforts. If we uh, try to uh, develop full-fledged formal specification of requirements, that's a very complex task itself. But at the same time, we have to mention and a lot of uh, discussions for <coughs> the results that a proof of this uh, is that uh, this uh, and try to develop formal specification of requirements is itself very valuable uh, approach and uh, it's even more valuable than uh, formal verification that follows that uh, <coughs> formalization uh, step. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, deductive verification can be applied uh, with, uh, with and provide very good confidence, uh, but can be very expensive. And at, uh, our side, runtime verification can have moderate cost, but with limited uh, confidence. And uh, as far as I have no time anymore, uh, let let me say thank you for your attention and uh, I will be happy to answer on your questions. Uh, and Ale yes. Bye. Alexei, thank you very much.